Now, the Queen. The Queen's on the front page this morning, of course, pictured in Balmoral. There she is. Oh, she's so tiny. She's uh, appointed, of course, um, our new Prime Minister, and lots of the papers quoting the key line from Liz Truss's Downing Street speech. And she says, together we can ride out the storm. Meanwhile, though, the mirror leads with now fix the Britain that you lot broke. Well, my next guest will, of course, be working closely alongside the new Prime Minister, Scotland's First Minister. Nicola Sturgeon joins me now. Really good to see you this morning. Thank you for joining us. Now, normally the new leader makes a beeline in the, the first couple of days or indeed the first day they take over to come and see you. Is that day in the diary? I um, don't think it's in the diary yet, but uh, the new Prime Minister, and let me again give her my congratulations, is welcome to come here to Butte House for discussions uh, anytime she likes. Uh, Liz Truss is, of course, the, the fourth Prime Minister that I've dealt with in my time as First Minister, and I've welcomed uh, her three predecessors here. Uh, what I would say is there are big, really important issues for us to discuss. We have deep political differences. I think we can take that as read. But we've both got uh, a responsibility, a duty to the people we serve to work together to try to find uh, ways of getting the UK through the cost of living crisis. So I stand ready to work constructively with Liz Truss, notwithstanding the differences we have. Yeah, notwithstanding the fact that she was very rude about you, actually, um, you're being very magnanimous. <laughs> and I know, you know, I know politics can can get a little bit rough sometimes, you know. But she she did basically say that you should be ignored and that you were an attention seeker. Clearly, she was playing to the gallery. Some may even say she was seeking attention from them, and she got a round of applause. But you know, you you've just said that that's in the past now, and we we move forward. Look, I, I'm very willing to take her as I, I find her. I, I don't expect there will be many areas where we uh, come to a, a political meeting of minds. You know, we have different views, different values, very different outlooks on the future of Scotland, the UK I, and the world, I, I suspect. But we are both in big positions of responsibility at the most serious time of crisis that m most of us, certainly either of us, can remember. So we've got to, to try to work together. Uh, you know, she said some things during a Tory party leadership contest. I'm sure I will say some things in SNP circles about her. That's politics. Yeah. Uh, but we need to put that aside mm -hmm. to make sure we are doing everything we can within our different spheres of responsibility to help people at uh, a time of real crisis and real need. I mean, for the last uh, couple of months, she's been playing to, you know, 100,000 or so Conservative Party members. It's not an entirely normal audience. Let's be uh, charitable and accept that. What I said at the weekend, I'd say again, if she continues to govern in the way that she has campaigned for the last couple mm. of months, then things are going to very quickly go badly wrong. But let's hope that's not the case. I've been encouraged by some of the speculation around what she is likely to say tomorrow about energy bills, because that has to be the top priority, to yeah. freeze energy bills, to bring relief to households and to businesses, crucially, but also to start to bear down on inflation. So I'm sure there are areas uh, that we will have deep disagreements on, but let's try and work together as much as we can. And you've become, you know, you've got ahead of the game in that, because yesterday, obviously, you announced a rent freeze, an increase in child benefits. You know, you've already been doing that, so you would like to see her do more as soon as possible. Absolutely. Uh, and within hours, not days, certainly not weeks. I mean, I, you know, I don't think it's a secret uh, to hear me say that I'm deeply frustrated that my government, the Scottish Parliament, doesn't have more powers here over taxation, borrowing the regulation of a, a broken energy market. But where we have powers, we're using them. Uh, yesterday, we announced that a freeze on rents uh, because this is an emergency and every power has to be used effectively at a time like this. We're freezing uh, rail fares for uh, the next few months as, as well. And you mentioned the Scottish child payment. This is a payment that doesn't exist anywhere else in the UK. We've used our power to give at the moment £20 per week per child up to the age of six in the lowest income families. From November, uh, that is going to be increased again to £25 per week per child. That will mean it's increased by about 150% in just eight months. And then we'll extend it also to children in low income families up to age 16. So that is a game changer in terms of uh, the longer term objective of lifting kids out of poverty, but it will also provide crucial help to families at this time. 
Some might say Boris Johnson was the best thing that ever happened to the SNP um, until well, we'll find out what this new Prime Minister is, is going to be like. She has said no, no, no to an, another uh, referendum on independence. I mean, that seems pretty clear cut. So, so what is it now? Is it checkmate? Well, let me come on to that in a second, but I'll, I'll address your Boris Johnson point first of all. I mean, the electoral success of the SNP, of course, predates Boris Johnson, and I am not complacent, but I would predict it will outlive, politically, outlive Boris Johnson. Uh, because the reason the SNP is electorally successful is that we're on the side of people in Scotland and we act in the best interests of people in Scotland. We're not perfect. Not everybody supports us or votes for us, uh, but we do command that level of support. Um, and I'm not sorry to see the back of Boris Johnson. I think he's been the worst Prime Minister in memory. Uh, but in terms of an independence referendum, this is something I was elected on a promise to deliver. Uh, the world has changed a lot over the past few years. Scotland has been taken out of Europe. All sorts of policies are being imposed on us against our will. This trust is just the latest Tory Prime Minister that Scotland hasn't voted for and wouldn't vote for. Uh, so it's not up to Liz Truss uh, or me whether Scotland becomes independent. That should only be decided by people in Scotland. Now, the Supreme Court, UK Supreme Court, will hear a case next month uh, looking at whether the Scottish Parliament has the competence to legislate for a referendum, regardless of what the UK government uh, says. So let's hear the outcome of that. I'm hoping it will be positive and that will clear the way for a referendum next year that will then let the people of Scotland decide, because that's democracy uh, and that choice can only be made by people in Scotland. Nicola, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I think that first meeting is, is going to be an interesting one, maybe a tad icy. <laughs> thank you very much indeed for joining maybe us I'll invite this you to morning. it, Lorraine. You, you can... <laughs> You can hold the jackets. Yeah, yeah, I would quite like that, actually. That sounds like a good plan. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.